Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 Blueprint tutorial. We are back working on our hazard here with the UMG HUD. Uh, just to show you kind of where we left off, we have the HUD on the actual hazard. We're able to walk into it and it loses health and it counts how many times we've hit it. Uh, so now what we're going to do is set it so that when it runs out of health, uh, we change the flipbook just so that it's bloody uh, and it goes transparent so you know you can't really interact with it anymore. Uh, so to get that going, what we're going to need to do is import some more assets here. Uh, so all these assets I have pre-made, uh, I just need to pretty much import them in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, so in our spinning saw, I'm going to right click and import uh, some new content in here. Do, 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 do. And same thing for the metal pole. I do have a, a bloody version of the metal pole. And now, uh, because the spinning saw, I'm going to still have it animate uh, when uh, it gets destroyed or used. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and need to make another sprite and a new animation for it. Uh, so we're going to pretty much replicate what we have here, um, except just change uh, all we have to change is the texture in there. Um, so let's go ahead and it's going to be kind of confusing the way I just did it, <laughs> um, but whatever. Um, so let's go ahead and replace the textures as needed. Let's find here's zero degrees. Let's go into our textures here. Actually, let's just open up all of them real quick, make our lives easier. What's after ninety one twenty five? No, one thirty five, and then one eighty. Oops. Do do do. Alright, now we have all of them open. Let's go into our textures that we just imported for the bloody saw and just replace them. Nothing too big. So that's one. And now where's the 90 degrees? Here we go. Nope, 45 degrees, my bad. And then 90 degrees. And 135. Then 180. 225. And then 270. And then 315. And right now I just need to change the names of these sprites. They, they copied over in a weird way. Uh, so we'll call this spinning saw underscore bloody underscore 180. So I'll just copy that and change the number at the end. So that's 90. This is 45 degrees. Whoops. One thirty-five zero degrees. This is three fifteen. Oops. Two seventy. This is 225. Okay, that didn't copy its name. And there we go. 
And then last but not least, we just gotta make this sprite again. Yeah, so we'll call this FB underscore spinning saw underscore bloody. And then we'll open it up and then basically change the elements that are in there. So for zero. Let's open all these guys up real quick. And let's just place them in. Slowly but surely. And there you go. So now we have a bloody version of the spinning saw. Now all we really need to do uh, to get it to actually play is get its health. Uh, so hazard health. I will do a branch. Whoops. Now first we need to see if it's less than or equal to zero. And then we can do a branch. So if it is less than or equal to zero, that's when we'll, there's actually a node that we can do. It's called uh, set flipbook. Uh, so let's grab our spinning uh, saw flipbook, pull from it, do set flipbook. And now we need to just grab the bloody flipbook and put it in as the new flipbook right there. So let's see if that works. So let's just run into this a bunch of times and die. There we go. And now it turns into the bloody flipbook and it still animates, everything's still good. Um, so we also want to make the pole bloody. Uh, so let's go into the metal pole here. Uh, let's duplicate its sprite, we'll just call this uh, bloody underscore metal pole. And then just change its texture uh, to the one that's bloody. And uh, voila, <laughs> that's done. Um, so now let's just go back into our spinning saw blueprint, go to metal pull sprite. Uh, is there, I wonder if there's a set sprite. Yeah, there is, cool. <laughs> Most excellent. <laughs> Plug that in. Let's grab our bloody sprite. Sound British. Let's grab our bloody sprite. All right, that was a bad joke. All right, let's see if this works. And it does, perfect. So the last thing we want to do is set the opacity so that they kind of fade out a little bit, just so you know you can't really interact with them. Uh, I know probably the health bar being on the way low is enough, but I want to add this extra little feature there just to you know drive it all home. Uh, so to do this. Uh, let's first, let's go into the, it's going to be with the bloody pole and the bloody spinning saw. Uh, right now it has a default material. It sh it's showing the uh, masked unlit sprite material. Let's hit the magnifying glass to find it. And we're actually going to change this. We're going to change it to opaque unlit sprite material. And what we're actually going to do, we're going to grab this. Um, we'll put it into our sprite folder for now. We'll do a copy of it. And let's just rename this uh, mat underscore sprite opacity. And let's double click on it and open it up. Um, and actually, it, it looks like it's a material instance, so we don't want that. Uh, we want its parent, so let's find its parent real quick. All right, here's its parent. Let's do the same thing with the parent sprite folder. Let's move it on over there. Uh, actually, make a copy of it. We can delete the one copy of the other one we made. Now let's rename this new one Matt underscore sprite opacity. Double click on it. And what we're going to do, if we hold down, actually now if we right click and press, uh, press spell out scalar, we're going to create a scalar parameter called opacity. Set this to 1 for now. And then hold down M and left click, create a multiply. And in this material, we have a multiply function that goes into the opacity mask. Let's put that output into this new multiply we created and we're drawing the opacity we just created through that scalar parameter. 
and then put that multiply into the opacity mask. You shouldn't see any changes, but now if we change the scalar parameter like 25, you should start seeing it slowly fade out. Actually, no. What we're going to do instead now is click on the main hub here, change it from mask to translucent, and plug our multiply into opacity. And now you should see it fading out. So, so put it back to 1, and then 0.1. You kind of see it's getting see through. So by default, we'll put this to 1 and save it. And now what we can do, uh, let's go into our metal pole bloody and our spinning saw, the bloody uh, flipbook. And what we're going to do, we're going to select that opacity material we just created. And right here under default material, we're going to put in that material. So hit the arrow. You shouldn't see any changes by default. And we'll do the same thing under default material. And now that we have that, let's go ahead and go back into our blueprint. And let's go to our spinning saw flipbook. We're going to drag it out to create dynamic material instance. And let's also open up our material again. And right now we named the scalar parameter opacity, so we need to keep that in mind. So what we're going to do now, pull from this and do set scalar parameter value. Uh, let's make it 0.2 and the parameter name, that's opacity. So just remember that. And now we're going to do the same thing, uh, but for the metal pull sprite. So drag that out, do create dynamic material instance. Then we just copy and paste this set scalar parameter value because they are using the same material. Um, and that should be it. So let's see if that works. And there we go. So it kind of fades out. So we got that working. So that's fun. Now that we have that going, uh, what else we can do is uh, do the same thing for the hit icon and the health bar and everything like that. Uh, so what, all we really need to do, if you remember, let's go into our UMG. If we click on our hit icon, it actually has uh, parameters for opacity already. And the same thing goes uh, for our progress bar meter has an opacity. Uh, so all we really need to do, you know, continuing off this train of thought over here, is uh, let's get our, get our hazard HUD, and then get user widget. Cast to our HUD, our UMG HUD. And if we pull from here, you can see uh, we named ours hit icon. So right there, get hit icon. And we can just drag from that to set opacity. And we'll keep consistent with the 0.2. So we'll set that to 0.2. And we can also do the same thing for our bar meter. Uh, so see where it says get, uh, which one is it named? Progress bar meter. So get progress bar meter. Set opacity. We can set that to 0.2. So now, we can just jump into it. And now, they're opaque too, which is perfect. I'm not too sure, uh, kind of off the top of my head, that the hazard health bar, we can set its opacity, but we can go ahead and try. Uh, does, it makes sense that we should be able to. Uh, so let's do hazard. 
get bar. No. And we can get hazard health bar. So opacity. <laughs> Set its alpha to zero. Let's see if that works. Actually, no. Uh, let's click its color, set it to 0.2. We'll do ones all around. Mm -hmm. Compile. And let's see if that works. Uh, doesn't seem to be, but it doesn't really matter in the long run. So we'll leave it as that stands. We'll leave that in there. Uh, so the last thing I want to go ahead and do uh, is I do have audio uh, for the saw here. Uh, so let's create a new folder. Just call it audio. audio. And then import audio buzzsaw. Right click on that, create Q, call this SC underscore buzzsaw. Now with that selected, let's go into our blueprint for saw, add a component, add audio, we'll call this buzzsaw sound, um, and we'll attach it to our spinning saw flipbook. That way, if it gets moved, it moves with it. Now in our event graph, uh, so let's go move some things back. We want to play this sound before we check the hazard's health. So let's grab our buzz soft sound, pull from it, get play, and just connect it up. Oops, I'll grab everything here. Compile. Oh yeah. And let's go back into our blueprint, select the audio component, uncheck auto activate just so it doesn't play the sound as soon as you play. There we go. Uh, but now the one problem we're going to run into is it's going to keep doing it, I believe. Actually, no, it's not. Cool. <laughs> Alright, perfect. Alright, so that's really it for we got the hazard working 100% now. Uh, so, what we're going to do next in the next video is work on the player character, I give him health, give him a hit counter, kind of repetitive things like that. Um, but for now, I want to say thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for checking out that tutorial. If you enjoyed the content and you aren't subscribed to our channel here, click on me or the subscribe button above to subscribe to the Devon Level Design YouTube channel. On the right is some more Blueprint tutorial videos and other videos you can check out. And also in the description, you can check out some social media content. You can check out my portfolio. You can check out Radial Impact if you haven't checked that out as well. Uh, also, a big shout out to Esteban Lopez, who I'm working with on this project. He's been helping me out, doing a lot of good stuff for the project. Um, and also, if you haven't, please comment, sub, uh, like, share, do all that good stuff. Um, and I would appreciate it. Um, but for now, I want to say thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.